A long time ago, I bought a piece of property on 420. It used to be Kimball's property. Uh, my land uh, connects right to the industrial park, right up there. Okay? If you remember, there's a green, a big green building, a new one that Kimball put in. There's a vacant lot, and there's a double duplex. I bought all three of those properties and went across there. This here's where it all stemmed from. I had different people want to rent the garage from me. I knew that the Kimball had a problem on ever putting a garage in there. So I wasn't going to be, I'm going to buy this here and I'm going to change it because I'm going to have a garage there. Let me interrupt you and explain. There, there's a, a, what looks from the street to be a vacant lot on 420 with a garage in the back of that lot, right? There's no house, there was no, maybe there was a house at one point. The green garage right hand side says front garage. Right. Yes. Okay. yes. I want to return. Yes. I just wanted to know yes. what you're talking yep. about. So, so, okay. so your yeah. intent was to lease that or rent that no. out for a garage? No. The green garage, which Kimball tried to run it as a garage, but he got in a, a match with a neighbor and they wouldn't let him do it. Okay. So as years went by, I did not buy this place knowing that I could go put a garage there. I knew Kimball had a problem of putting a garage there. But as the years went by, I had bought all the properties across here, three of them. Okay, the vacant lot, the double duplex. So they're all mine, there's no neighbors, only one neighbor on one side, which has no problem, apparently, with me having a garage there or a motor vehicle repair shop or somebody working in there. Because they even more, they mow our lawn for us. They're you know, nice people. Um, we have them using driveways and stuff. So there's no problems there. This here's the one where Avis, when I went to see Avis one day, she says, oh no, that's commercial. A residential area, you can do that. Fine. Okay, I said, Avis, I think you might be a little bit wrong. Huh? No, no, you're right. <laughs> okay, she takes my money and sends me in front of the ancillary board. And that's where we all went around the circle. That's the planning board for Bob. What number is that? Is that 2281 or 2283? Uh, the garage is 2279. But there is, car, there is car dealerships down through here, there's body shops down through here, there's different stuff. All the way down through there. Okay, so I just I try to get this here through. No, so I just kind of pass off a little bit. They tell me. Let, let me interrupt you again. It, the planning board said it wasn't their purview because the lot is undersized for business. Undersized for right. business. And that's why it was rejected before, and that was why the zoning board of appeals ruled that way again recently. Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure they uh -huh. understand that. Which, which I told them, I said I can add them all together, and don't have except for 36 foot, the 200 foot frontage, wherever they come up with. Add them all together, because they're all mine anyways. Harry won't listen to me, won't nothing. They put other businesses in down on 420 since Kimball had this problem, okay, that they gave him what, the 200 foot road frontage, okay. They're not 200 foot. There's different ones down to there. I'm not going to name them off, but I, we could, Sit down, write them down. They let those go through. <clears throat> There's other places that the town zoning board lets them do spot, dropping in a used car lot for this one, uh, another shop for this one here. I'll, I'll go on for a couple of them, okay? You got uh, Todd Brown. I like Todd, he cleans cars. He put, a, he put a business in, a uh, special touch by the airport, on the airport run by, okay? I told Todd, I says, Todd, because he, he does cars for me, I said, Todd, you're going to have a problem because the board will jerk you around and probably give you a hard time about putting business in because you've got to deal with these other certain people. I lent him the money for his down payment so he could get his house to put his house in, to buy his house and run his business. He got it through, Okay. So the planning board approved him. They approved him. Yeah. All right. Paul Morrow gets in an argument with Fred Dupin. They're in a business down there <laughs> in the corner of South Main Street. They let Fred Dupin, probably one of the nicest houses on that road, on the airport road that Harry Collins lives on, okay, let him run a used car business down there where he can move out of Messina. That's not even a hard time. It's just because he didn't want to pay the rent because they got too much of an argument. They spot zoned him to run a used car business down here. Another place 
They've got a uh, dance studio, great big, huge signs and stuff. I think it's great all these people can have these businesses because Alcoa is not going to be here. I'm not, I'm not against the business. I think it's great. Amvets Road, Frigo Road. They give a long time ago permission for a used car dealership down there on that road. 420 on the one where Kimball's property is. That used to be a pretty dumpy section all the way down through there, right to the dump. And they've got landlords down through there. It's really fixed up pretty nice now. You've got a few places down through there that's rough. I do not see any problem whatsoever why this garage here can't be rented out as doing motor vehicle repairs. Because you're picking and choosing. But this here's got to do with not you guys, because you didn't know what was going on. I would think, as Mr. Gray being the town supervisor, he's kind of like the, the head man, and when somebody sends you an email, and he does have emails, which I saw them, where you request to see these people and talk to them, they could totally blow him off like he's nobody. What is his position of being a town supervisor if you can't control your people on your boards? If he sent any one of you an email and he'd like to talk to you or want you at a meeting, I suppose you'd probably be there unless it's the death of the family or your vacation in Florida or someplace. Where is Harry Collin and Vince Flurry so busy? Oh, are they at one of the restaurants, maybe? They're supposed to be here tonight. Now, this sounds to me like a click where they're not being fair, and I think that people should be removed from their positions. I like them personally, but being at the position to, to hold people's hand and say, you can't do this and you can't do that, but I'll let you do this, and I'll let you do that because you're my friend, but I don't know if I like you. All I want is a reason. Sit down at the table. Tell me your reason why you let this one, why you won't let this one, and why that one. And if I go to sell my properties, I got the industrial park exactly right in my backyard, which I bought the property knowing the industrial park is there, which I don't care, but why can't I have a darn little stupid garage there? And they're all around me down at that area. If I own a lot of property in Messina, in Messina and in the town, if I go to sell some of these properties off sometimes, when you got a sign out there that says commercial, okay? I, like I told a lot of people, you better be damn careful because commercial could be, you have a dog, a dog uh, dressing place or a hairdressing place, but you can't run this there and you can't run that there because they pick and choose who they want, where they want. Unless you know the person and you're going to get it through the board. I've got a, I've got a piece of property on uh, Tripany Road. It used to be Slavens. It used to be Burnham's Trailer Park. Okay? You all know where that is? Okay. Have you been down through there in the past year or so? Green. Went by green. Blue. The blue? Yeah, it's a, a double duplex. I cleaned the whole place all up, tore the whole place down, redid the whole place all over brand new, okay? I had a contractor in this town ask me about buying it. He said, well, I'd like to buy it, but he said, I'm afraid I'm going to have a problem. They probably won't let me have what I want there. And the contractor is Levac. Okay, Levac lives over on Frigo Road. Which he's got a beautiful house over there, but whatever he's running, he has a problem over there where he has. So he thought he'd move over on my road. And I said, I don't know what would happen. And I really don't know right to this day what would happen. Because around me, on that road, I own another place right in front of the uh, Border Patrol, one of those nice houses up in the middle up there, okay? And I used to own a property down where Vanny O'Brien is, the big corner, okay? I got Paris running trucking business out of there, which is no problem. I'm not doing a bitching, okay? I'm just doing an example. Then you go around to the side road, and you got the other kid down there that's running uh, the bulldozers, and well, he's on the planning I'm on the planning board, I think. Sean Burke. Sean Burke, running a beautiful place down there, running his business down there, okay? So I say to Levac. I suppose if they run it, I don't see any reason. You're in the middle. Why can't you? He says, Cause probably because they don't like me, so they can choose. My question is, if I sell him this place or do any dealings with him, are they going to let him go in there? I'm not asking you people because you can't answer me that. These other people are the ones. Because I'll bet you they'll screw with them and won't let him do it. Because he's not on the, that side of the town. No, I, I mean, just to comment on that one situation... Um, a home business is for somebody to run a business out of their home with their primary family, not to have other people come to work for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the 
issue there was screening topsoil, creating dust, vibration, noise, and mm -hmm. disrupting the other neighbors. That was a the problem there. So that's a trucking business over there. Uh, it's not supposed to be a trucking business. It's not supposed to have topsoil. What is burnt? It doesn't have topsoil over there. Okay. What is Paris? I know. What is Paris? I had the property right beside it, and I had the trucks going in and out all over. But you know what? They can have it. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I own property on the roof. I don't care. Well, what are they going to do to this guy or do to me selling my property? Are they going to jerk him around or everybody creating people? Well, there's two things that, uh, that we have, I haven't, t haven't talked to you about this before that I think about in this situation. You're talking about consistency. Are we, doing the, are we applying the same standard to everybody? They're not. Which, which is a legitimate question. Mm -hmm. But the other thing, if, if somebody wanted to potentially buy your property and have a business there, say whoever wants to, well, Zach wants to move in. Mm -hmm. I would think that the best order would be for him to talk to you saying, you know what, I would like to lease your property or buy your property contingent upon approval from the planning board. Sure. Then he goes to the planning board and see if he gets approved. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get approved, he doesn't buy your property. If he gets sure. approved, then he buys your property. Mm -hmm. So right. that might be the best way to do it if you're seriously mm -hmm. considering that, that option. Yes. What about if they turn me down? Then you're not going to sell the property, it doesn't seem like. Then what am I going to do? Am I going to say, to how come they can have this one? How come they can have that one? And I'm sending them out? You've already no. That, yes. <laughs> all right, let's be fair. Let's be fair, that's okay. all. This all right. town is not fair. You've got a great board here, but I think you better change some of your people that's on these other boards. Everybody says you need younger people on. You need younger people, okay? I have sat back and watched. They bring a younger person on the board, okay? you got the older chairman that's on the board, and he's sat in one way. Younger guy is being trained off him because a little while later, they talk to their friends, oh yeah, I'm going to make a difference. A little while later, they're the same as the person that was on the boards. Yes. The same way, they agree with the same way. True. My mother used to have this little glass and had a little puppet, went down and tipped down. If the chairman of the board agrees, well, I don't think we should have that. Everybody else agrees. Everybody's always, yes, yes. Nobody ever argues about with each other. I've been to Brazier. North Fork all over, and I see the guys getting arguments, so sometimes it's two to three, or whatever. Your board's a machine, everybody agrees upon the same thing, because the decision is made before they even came to the meeting on who it is and what's going on. Now, if this guy here, Harry Collins, does not have, cannot come to this here, and he's been asked different times by the town supervisor, I consider, like the mayor, the president, whatever, he should not be here. He should not be on these boards anymore. It's 204. Put younger people in. Don't take somebody off that board. Put a newer person in. Do you guys understand what I'm well, saying? I certainly do, and I don't want to get in the way of uh, creating business. Or we need business right. here. You weren't going to have any businesses in this town. You've got all these little small businesses, the mom and pop businesses, and, and somebody that's trying to, uh, maybe they got laid off the plant, that was a mechanic that worked at Frenchie's. Now he wants to open up his garage because he's laid off from the plant. And pretty soon, three or four years, there ain't going to be no plant. That plant's going to bail out. Messina better start looking at what are they going to do, and don't look at all these small. I mean, don't look at all these big places. Let's get this in. Let's get that in. Nobody's going to come to Messina. There's nothing to offer around here. It used to be many years ago. I thought this year was the greatest town. I grew up here, graduated here. I bought a lot of property here. I thought it was great. Now I probably couldn't give the property away. I'm lucky if I can pay the taxes. But I do pay the taxes. But I can't sell the properties. I'm sure. There's nothing downtown here. They're working on that. Well, you, all right, you're standing working on it. I'm going to give you another example. I own two businesses downtown here, bars, we'll say. Fryer Tucks and Augie's Sports Bar. Fixed them up, put a lot of money in, did them up real, real nice. I got a spot across the road that would all burnt. And all I hear is they're going to clean that all up. You know, they got a little fence up there, and they're going to put buildings up and all this other stuff. Nobody's going to do that. But see the school of business come up for taxes this year, okay? A long time ago, when Messina School of Business sold that, wanted to sell it, Harry Klopman and I was pretty good friends. I learned a lot from Harry. We go, we go to the auction. Harry sat beside me. We're bidding up to a certain price because we wasn't going to pay him too much for it. And I was bidding on it because I was going to get it for myself. Thank God, I did not get it. Okay? Another guy stepped in and bought it from Malone. Okay? He did absolutely nothing with that place. You walk by and the place stinks. The, the bricks are falling off of the whole thing. Okay? So I get an idea. I'm going to go to the tax auction. My wife says to me, she says, if you buy that, I'm going to kill you. 
because you're not going to have it. I said, no. I got an idea before I went. It was three weeks before I went to tax auction. I went down to see the mayor. I asked the mayor, I said, if I buy Messina School of Business, will you accept that as a gift from me to you? And you guys tear it down to do, or do something with it. He says, I don't know. He says, sounds, sounds pretty good. He said, I'll have to talk to my other people that I'm with because it's going to be an expense. Tear it down. Okay? I figured I could buy it for about $10,000 to so go be my maximum bid. Somebody bought it at the tax auction for $5,000. I let it go. I, didn't, I couldn't bid on it. I'm getting jabbed from her. And, and uh, this guy buys it for like $5,000. The mayor never gets back to me because he did, apparently did not want to accept it. The town won't even take it free of charge. They won't clean up Messina. You guys yeah. got to do something but, with this town. But you got the town of Messina and the village, okay? Yeah. I consider they're one place. I'm not going to defend the village, but I'm going to tell you, if you came to me with that offer as a town supervisor, I'd say, no way in hell am I going to take a building. It's going to cost me $100,000 to tear down, yeah. remediate, to have a vacant lot. I know. Because it now is now off the tax roll. I know, and I don't blame you. So, right. But so, nobody's going to pay the taxes on anyways. What are you going to do with it now? The code enforcement tells me, I'm just waiting to see who gets it so I can start sending them letters. Yeah. Who's going to fix it up? You, you've got to... I haven't talked to the guy about it, but I think he will. He's going to put an awful lot of money in it. Oh, he's going to go I mean, he's going to put more money in it. It's not going to be worth anything. The same way as your Sunrise Mall down here. That's, that, that's all really well, good. Why not to put you that's on the recruitment good. committee for getting two people in the town? It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty solid. I'll put you in the public relations. The bricks are falling out of the stuff. You know, well, I, I, when, when I was going to buy it, I wanted oh, to put yeah, apartments yeah. upstairs on the yeah. first few floors. Worst so thing that ever happened. They told me that the hallway is not wide enough yeah. for golf. So, so that was kind of a, yeah. a done deal there. A lot of pigeons. Posure is probably the dead cat in there, too. Yeah. But there's a lot they can do in this town. They got to work together. Yep. And if you got these, well, you, you guys got a younger board, board here, pretty much, except for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you've always been open minded. Right? Like, sure. <laughs> you've always been open minded. All right, but like I said, you got a, you got people here that really knows what's going on, and you got the the younger generation, which you're not training them to be like some on some of the other boards. Okay, you're doing a good job. That's why you're really like anybody's ever called me the younger generation. <laughs> <laughs> you're much older than I am. I'm not going to call you. I go back to the. You know, I don't want to see a stand in the way of progress, but. Um, there's codes out there to protect values of property, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I mean, you have to follow that, too. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not disagreeing with you having a garage on itself. The garage is already there. Mm -hmm. And um, well, if you, there you are codes to protect, you know, the area neighbors, make sure their value of their property is up. So, right. if you say the guy rents that place from you and he's got junk cars all around, then, I know. But, but if he does, then what? Then we have to fight. We have to fight that guy. Or take the no, court, you don't. You have to fight, fight the guy that owns the property. Well, if you're, if you're, guys, gonna, if you're gonna sell it, then it's the other guy's then property. Then the guy that owns the property is the one that's got to kick him out. But the same thing. If you got Fred Doopy down here, beautiful place, got his car sales, nice car sales, keeps yeah. nice and neat. Nothing wrong in that. Yeah. Okay. Can I put one down that road? No. Of course not. Of course you can't. You know, because we're gonna pick and choose again. No, I don't think Mr. Ever, uh, I applaud you for coming here. I do. I'm, I'm happy you're here voicing your mm -hmm. opinion. Could you at least give us the opportunity, the board, to speak to the zoning board about your sure. issue? And before yes. we can, you know, because we don't, we didn't hear the other side of the story. But I applaud you for mm -hmm. coming okay. and voicing your opinion mm -hmm. here because people don't do it in Cena. Because my I issue was, my issue is 36 foot short, but I got one way of fixing that. So then why? Oh, I have to. Huh? Why don't you? Because all I have to do is buy the other property beside me. Well, we'll property. Well, so if I buy that one, the extra one that went back to the bank, that's going to give me more than that 36 foot. Yeah. Then what are they going to say to me? What's the excuse then? That's what I want to know from <laughs> Mr. Right. Harry Collins. Right. <laughs> Why do... So, what, all right, so I go buy it, and what are they going to say? Hey, screw you. Well, no. Okay, so the issue here is the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals? Yes. Well, I want the him. That's the issue. The, the 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 right. The chairman will sell you it was rejected because the lot was undersized. But it really So if he says if he if he buys a lot next door and combines the two into one lot, can he then go back for But for is that the only lot? issue or are there more issues, obviously? From well, what I've been told it's just the size of the lot was the reason for the I mean on uh, you know other things. 
my issue is how come the other lots down the road, the other businesses they let in, we would have to explore that. The tent guy, right. that's what I want to know. But it isn't up to you guys to explore it. Why can't that guy give me the answer? Well, we'll, we'll explore <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. And why. why would you give a uh, spot zone all these other places? Mine is that the industrial park. The industrial park is behind me. All I want is a good reason. Tell me the reason why. Well, I, I think yeah. he did. It's, it's, he did not. He said the he lot, not. The lot said, is undersized. That's right. But he said the lot is undersized, and the way he is at the board, it's undersized this year for this. I'm going to go by whatever the, uh, the county says, he says. The board can override the county. Do you think the county can let all these others in? If it was undersized so then by 200 foot. the county then? Or the he said the county. All right. All right, so the board can override the county. All right. Yeah. All right. He must have override the county for those other ones on 420 that this came they came up in the past uh, six seven years. We're not really sure. All right, you're not sure, but that's why that man should be right here to answer the questions. He should be off the board. But they're saying they're going to look into that, and, and he won't even look up to him. I'll, and he's the head man. I'll tell you. We can talk about this till the cows come home. But he, I think we need to look at the process for applying to for either the. Planning board or the zoning board. And we have a process there. Everybody gets who comes through the door is treated the same way. Nobody in the office gives any opinions because their opinions don't matter, quite frankly. No offense to the people in the office. The board makes the decision. So I think we need to look at the entire process to make sure that we're applying the same rules to everybody. And, and, and the one thing that I'll agree with, and there may be more, but the one thing I'll agree with publicly is that I believe. You should have been able to get your money back when you went to the planning board. Did you, did you ask for it back? Did yeah, I said this year they got me two times. Yeah. Well, you certainly should get refunded for the planning board because you were, it was before the wrong board. Yeah. All and, I said, and, they and, waited, made me go to it. They could have called me on the phone. Well, and, and I that's the other thing I agree with. That if, if it had been rejected once before, you should have been told, this was rejected once before. We're not even here for the board because it's already been rejected once. Mm -hmm. it should have, there should have been a meeting of the board a second time, in my opinion. If it already been ruled on. That's why I wanted to talk to him, and he I would not talk to me on it. I understand that. And if he's in that position, he should be there to talk to me. Say, hey, look, take one of the offices. Here's what the problem was, Tim. You know what? I'll accept it. Because I accepted it when I bought it, because I knew it was a problem. But then I saw everybody else getting it. So I thought, well, oh, shit, if they're getting the pot, well, why can't I? I? I think that's a good point. I think yeah. that we should write a policy on what to do. And it should be very clear. One of the it should be also a swim line, so it's not... Right. All this running around and uh, yeah. well, I don't think yeah he should be calling the chairman of the zoning board. Yeah. Well, and, and as I think my secretary said to me, we should have one office with one person in there that does code enforcement, every everything else, where it's a one-stop thing if you want to do it, if you have a project. Yeah. And we sort of have that, but we don't because we've got different I think boards involved. Some things done. I think we can improve some of that. that. Yeah. Steve, you don't think that I should be able to ask? The, the chairman of that board of reason why? Oh no, I, I don't I don't say that at all. Oh, that's what I just thought. The way you just no, I thought that's what you said. That's what it sounded. No, like. no, that's I'm what sorry. it sounded. What I meant was, you shouldn't have to. He shouldn't have to call the chairman to set up a meeting mm -hmm. to have have right. you know have the meeting. Who should? And that should be it. Should be it's set up by he did know, statute. When they Supervisor meet. Gray called the meeting. I mean, he called it, he called them guys for a meeting, and they refused him. Oh, just, yeah. I they refused him. It. They did. Who would ever? So I said, don't they know what? Two times. Out? Two times. They were supposed to be here at this meeting. The board. They were supposed That's to be here at this meeting. They cut their salary. Yeah. Well, so I think you have to change the position. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we owe it to Mr. Hardwire that we look into his situation, because we can debate this all night. Right. Mm -hmm. Get right. him an answer. Yeah. And, well, I think uh, you should have those people here. Point. I'll go for another meeting. I want to see them face to face. Get them here. I, I think the supervisor. Will, I think he'll. He can't take they care. Of that. No. Well, if, if he's if, got the right to be. He's got the ability to, to change that. If the entire Certainly board, not. If, if I can send a here saying that the entire town board wants them to come to a meeting, I'll do that. You, you run the day to day operations, sir. But if but if this, if this entire board feels they, there should be a meeting, then I'll pass that on. There's got to be something, no because more, this is I wrong. I have more authority yeah. on this right, board right. than any of you. You know, you can tell me no, but don't give the other ones in. Give me the reason why you let this one win. Give me the reason why you let that one win. Give me the reason why this one win. Why don't we check? Nobody's yeah. any different from that. Okay? <coughs> and, and a different 
contact to me might get better with a different result. I don't know. So we, well, we apparently you don't listen to your supervisor, right? Figure that out. A lot of people don't. I'm used to that. So. <laughs> okay. I get no Thank comments. You. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. 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 Thank you.